Hey YouTube, I'm the Tall Nerd. Welcome back once again. And, uh, whew. So, I'm a big fan of the Arrowverse on CW, all their DC shows. Uh, I like them a lot. I think they're a lot of fun. And that's what I want to talk about today. Because you see, this last season, I, I got a little behind, missed a few episodes, and then ended up the last, like, third of the season, I just, I, I got behind and couldn't see it. So I waited until it came out on Netflix, just not too long ago, and binged through it all again so that I could, you know, see it and finally know what happens. Uh, whew. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm actually really glad that I waited until now to see how all of these shows ended this season, because this video is going to be very spoiler-heavy. It's going to talk- I'm going to talk about how all of the seasons end for all four of these shows. So, be warned, and if you care about that, then click away from the video right now, because I'm going to get into it very quickly, and I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to rant for a while, because I'm not happy. Because, you know, DC, or CW, or whoever's in charge of writing these things, I, I have one question to ask. Why can't you let your characters be happy? That's... Ugh. All four of these shows had some kind of bittersweet or just downer endings. All four of them. Why? Legends of Tomorrow, we get to watch the entire cast get murdered. Kind of. And then all of time just gets screwed over and turned inside out. Supergirl, yeah, they save the day, but Supergirl kind of murders somebody to do it and her boyfriend has to leave forever in a very, very sad scene. The Flash, yeah, they save the day, but Barry dies right after they've finally saved Iris. Okay, he's not technically dead, but he may as well be dead. They, they do this whole thing about his race being over, and it's his finish line, and I guess they're setting up for Wally to take to, to take over starting next season, which, that's fine. I'm great with Wally coming into his own as the Flash and all that. But seriously? And then Arrow ends with everyone, maybe, probably, probably not act in reality, but with it looking like everyone just got blown up. Are you kidding me? Look, I, I understand where you're coming from. I understand what's going on here. The whole point is that you want the heroes, you want the characters to win, but you don't... You, you want there to be consequences. You want them to win, but at a cost. You want them to succeed but not all the way, because if everything's just happy and sunshine and rainbows, well, that's not interesting, right? And I get that. I understand that. That's fine. <sighs> but this is a TV show. You've had 20 or so episodes to go through and put these characters through whatever, whatever kind of stuff you want. You've had plenty of time to put them through trials and challenges and to just have awful things happen to them. Which happened. These were some kind of dark seasons. And then, for me at least, the whole idea of a season finale is that, okay, we've gone through all of this crap and all of this turmoil, all of this trouble and danger, and not knowing if, if things are going to work out. And then finally at the end, yes, it works. We did it. We're okay. We can take a little bit of a break now. Everything's going to be all right for a while. And yes, it came It came at a cost. Maybe people died, or maybe people are maimed, or maybe whatever. There was a cost, but everything worked out. And in this one, in this season for all four of these shows, yeah, things worked out, kind of, but not really. And that just, uh, it frustrates me so much, because I really do enjoy these shows. I mean, I don't enjoy them all all the same. Some of them I like more than others. But uh, I feel like you can do these kinds of storylines in in other media, maybe in, uh, in comics especially, you know, that these shows are based off of. But I don't think it works as well for TV. And I'll tell you why. Because in a comic... When you have a storyline come to an end and there's a bleak ending or bittersweet or just not as good as you would like, you know that in 
two weeks or maybe a month, you're going to get a new issue and a new storyline is going to start and the characters are going to start putting things back together and they're going to start working so that the negative ending that you just saw doesn't, you know, perpetuate. And you only have a very short wait time. When it's, say, a movie series, you know that if the series isn't done, if it's a trilogy and you're, and you're in, you know, movie one or movie two, you might have a downer ending be, so that the heroes can come back and have a, a, a heroic uh, second wind come back and be better than they were in that film. In TV, you don't have those kinds of assurances that, oh yeah, now they're going to come back and everything's going to be better. Uh, because you're never sure how much longer the show's going to be going for. And in comparison to the comics, you know, the, the TV shows end, and then you have, what, six months or something like that before the next season starts? All of a sudden, it's six months of, well, that was a downer. Instead of going, oh, yes, they succeeded. I can't wait to see what kind of challenges lie ahead of them. You get to the end of it, and you're just like... What now? Like, I want to see what happens, but I don't. I don't want to see what happens because I'm afraid that what happened is everyone's dead. Or, you know, main characters are just gone. Or that somehow this sad ending is just going to signal a shift in the tone. And now it's just going to be sad and bleak and a downer all the time. And if you're, for me at least, this is my perspective on it, if you're a TV show and you know that you have pretty substantial breaks in between your seasons, I feel like you don't want to go out on that kind of a note where you're making people go, ugh, that sucks. You want people to be excited. You want to give them something that will hold them over until the next season starts so that they come back and keep watching. Now, it's one thing if it's a bit of a downer ending, but it's also a cliffhanger, like, holy crap, this threat was even bigger than we thought. We're going to need another season to get into this. But that's not what this was. The, the plot's resolved, everything was done, and then... Crap. Bad things. Death. Whatever. And so, uh, that's just very frustrating to me. <sighs> Neither, nevertheless, I'm going to keep watching. Just because I refuse to admit and I refuse to accept that that this is going to be, you know, the start of a darker trend in these shows. I know that uh, I'm just hoping for the best here. <sighs> I don't like being angry. I don't like ranting, really. But sometimes it just uh, it feels good. It feels so good to get this off of your chest. And so, yeah, that I just... I literally just finished watching them, so I, I needed to get this out there. But before I go, time to transition into something a little bit happier, so here's a spotlight. So I love superheroes. That's probably no big surprise. But among all superheroes, I have a favorite, just like a lot of people. For me, that favorite is Wally West. So I was very sad when, well, things happened. But overjoyed when I found out that DC's Rebirth Initiative was bringing Wally back into continuity. And especially the thing that got me buying comic books regularly was Titans, and especially this one in particular, Volume 1, The Return of Wally West. You see, I went into a comic book store, was trying to figure out, you know, what to buy, saw this comic with Wally West's face on the cover, bought it. And I've been hooked on this particular series ever since. So Titans is about the original Teen Titans coming back together to form a new team and fight alongside one another once again. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, this volume, understandably, focuses a lot on Wally. He's just come back into the universe. He's trying to figure things out. He's trying to figure out what happened and why everything is different now. Uh, but the series as a whole is just a lot of fun. It's fun seeing characters interact and play off of each other and work with one another to solve problems bigger than themselves. And... Really, I, I can't... I feel like there's so much to say about this series and that I can't even fit it all into just a spotlight and I'm not sure I could fit it all into a video because I don't even know what to say. 
it's my favorite comic book series currently. It's the series that got me buying comic books regularly. And I think that everybody should pick up Titans Volume 1, The Return of Wally West, and just check it out. See if it's for you. So that's everything that I've got for you today. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this last season of the Arrowverse, or if you don't watch it, then I'm sorry. If you read Titans, let me know that too. But hey, until next time, everybody, have a great day.